I want to say that if, because I know that some of the people that watch my vlogs watch your guys' vlogs. Uh -huh. And if they're wondering why I'm not vlogging with you are, it's because it's Tim Tim's camera and we lost our big camera. So uh -huh. that's what's been up lately. Mm. Not so good. I did also want to share, we can share it somewhere else. $700 camera we lost. We can share it somewhere else too, but um, about the story of the surf lineup yesterday. I just thought that was such a cultural experience. Yeah. Surfing about. talk, I'm at. We can, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but this was more of a, beyond just surfing. This was like the culture of Hawaii. It sounds like you're about to share it right now. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> so like, like, we can share it another time, and then you just start sharing it. You want to share what, it? What do you want to do? I don't want to share it with you. I want to get both perspectives. Uh, okay, all right, so maybe we'll do it later. Um, but did, was that public shaming by Timothy? <laughs> what, the point I was, I was trying to make earlier about uploading the vlog is how protective I am of my image. Um, and it became very clear to me when I was doing that. And I think that we all are so protective of the image that we want people to see rather than who we actually are. That it's just a, it's, we're like constantly in performance mode. Or I, I say we, I'm trying to get in the habit of just speaking for myself instead of for others. Because basically any situation that we are encounter, we can always relate it back to we. I can always relate it back to myself. Which is pretty ironic when Big Brother is the one striving to ruin his reputation and share everything that you're so protective of. I mean, you know, you can say that Daniel's trying to ruin his reputation, but at the same time, I think there's That's still a, a level. Yeah, still a, a level of protecting his reputation. Uh, he's trying to maintain this reputation of someone that's trying to lose, uh, ruin their reputation. So, I was also going to say that maybe uh, you are always talking about we. Maybe me. Well, I'm always talking about what we. Uh, it goes back to this paradoxical conversation we were having last night about maybe there, maybe there is nothing. I'm not saying this is true, but potentially by considering that there is nothing external, that everything is internal. Mm -hmm. It's just like that maybe when you think you might think you're talking to other people but you're always talking about yourself mm. or by talking about yourself you're actually talking about everybody all and cells of the same kind of body and I do like earth. that that philosophy it's an uh, idea. that theory it's an idea. because I've become much more empathetic with people like whether someone says something to offend me I, I kind of like well like what there's been many times in my life where I've probably said something to offend someone and, some, and, and God and someone else has had the grace to forgive me and just look beyond that. So when someone offends you, A, I think it's important that you express it to them. <laughs> but B, have some grace because you've been shown a lot of grace yourself. And forgive. Be willing to forgive because you've been forgiven yourself many times. Diana thinks I need to train you. Hmm. You can't offend <laughs> that, is, that is kind of in a way it's still wrong <laughs> in a way it is giving a lot of freedom away if you think others can offend you yeah that sounds like a bit of a victim perspective to me mm, did I say that? yeah in a way you were like encouraging that when people offend you like that's common behavior but I, was, I, I will say since that prompted me that I don't I think you can get to a point where you mm. can't be offended or you, or you only, you can if you allow it. Only if you allow it. And sometimes, some t sometimes, from my perspective, it seems like some people like to allow themselves to be offended. Maybe because if there's a suppressed energy inside them and they want to let it out on but an unconscious you level. You mostly get offended if there is the slightest pinch of truth in it. Hmm. Yeah, I did say that, and that's one thing I'm grateful about hanging out with Daniel. He's such a stiffler on language <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> Or Diana said that, um, yeah, so I, I allowed myself to get offended in the past. And then, um, yeah, so it's, it's important to not only forgive myself, uh, to ask for forgiveness, but also to forgive others uh, for allowing themselves to get offended. <laughs> and then you'll realize that maybe being offended was just being excited. It was just a different form of being excited that wasn't as culturally as accepted as other forms. And then you might realize, wow, how much am I under the influence of my culture? Why are, why are people not asking me, why are you so happy? Because it does seem like people like to ask, why are you so mad? What about, why are you so happy? I'll tell you what, man. This video, now that I'm, I'm videoing myself talk, I, I've become very aware of, it's been revealed to me how impactful my pride is, my ego. So like when Diana says something like, 
uh, Daniel needs to train Timothy or something <laughs> like that. Whatever she said. <laughs> I noticed myself being defensive about that. I want to defend myself, defend my ego, because I don't need to be, I, I imagine I don't need to be trained. But the truth is, maybe I do need some training from Daniel. And just like Daniel probably needs some training from me, or Diana needs some training from me, or I need some training from Diana. You know, we're all here to share and grow with one another. Um, if you want to get real trippy, then we could say, like, Stifler language, I don't need it, but I do desire it. Yeah, but now now that we have this camera, I feel like I'm holding a thousand people in my hand right now. I have, I have an audience of a thousand people in my hand to prove myself to, or to uh, or not to prove myself to. So this vlogging, man, this is a powerful thing that we're doing right here. Oh, I was thinking about how vlogging could lead to enlightenment. It could also, but before before enlightenment, it could lead you down the path of uh, de destruction or the path of reconstruction. Maybe that's the precursor to enlightenment. Yeah, whichever way you want to look at it. But uh, man, one more thing for since we're partnering up here, I was thinking about how you said you're. It feels like you're holding a thousand people in your hand. Yeah. When I've had this realization like multiple times when I'm doing this book with Samuel, I make recordings and my not so ghostwriter writes them, transcribes mm -hmm. them into a book of passion. And um, sometimes I realize, but man, when I'm speaking these recordings, millions of people could be listening to this, which I think actually just reminds me of the truth that everyone, in a way, if God encompasses everything, if we believe God encompasses everything, that every time I'm saying something, everyone's always, like beyond everyone's always hearing it, like God's hearing it. Mm. So you can't keep a secret from anything in, in mm. one way. If you believe God encompasses everything, then how can you keep a secret from anything? I don't care if you're telling, talking in your own head, in your own room, more than a thousand people mm -hmm. are listening. Something much more powerful than a thousand people are listening. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you are, not only are you holding a thousand people on that camera, you might be holding <coughs> the voice of God in your vocal cords. Oh, okay. And your I thoughts. I actually have something to say. That's actually really important. <laughs> Let's, let's just hope that people actually made it this far in the vlog. So I was writing a blog post yesterday, and, and speaking of words being really important and someone else listening, I know you're a big believer in words creating your reality. And so the greatest example I have of that, that I would say is the most extreme example, is that when I used to watch these guys, of course they're always shirtless, and I was living with my ex-boyfriend, he used to be so jealous, and he was like, why are you watching these shirtless guys on YouTube? And I was like, like getting really defensive. I'm like, but they're really inspiring. Like, just let me watch the damn videos. Like, what do you think, I'm going to marry the damn guy? Like, he lives across the world. Did what you say it? something like that? Yeah. I said, what are the odds that I'm going to... I said, what do you think, I'm going to marry the guy? He lives across the world. Like, what are the odds that I'm even going to meet him? Mm. And I said those words. Mm. And here I am. I actually married the guy. So, to me, like when I think back on that, that's kind of scary. Mm. Like scary and powerful and super exciting at the same time. That you can actually speak it into reality, whether you know it or not. Mm. And that's like my greatest example of words, the power of words. And since we are Amen. getting on some pretty Amen. deep topics Amen. here. Amen. Um, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, it was... That, that's true. Like, I believe in my heart that that God knows my heart. He knows the attitude and condition of my heart and everything that I say, even whether it be out loud or to myself, that He can hear. So it's amazing to me how constantly I try to protect myself from the, my image, from the opinions of other people. Like what does it matter if other people see me in a certain way? All that really truly matters is how God sees me. Um, yeah. I had some more where that came from, but... Um, all right. <laughs> Cheers. So this is my calories probably till dinner time. I got uh, some venison and quinoa, and then I just made myself a smoothie, banana berries, and hemp milk. Watch out with the circle. Oh. Uh, and I got about 40 ounces of this uh, water here. It's electrolyzed, reduced water, uh, thanks to Daniel and Diana. And before we um, potentially, before I start talking less for a little bit, um, <laughs> I was going to tell a story about the surf lineup yesterday. We were in definitely waves that would easily be described as double overhead by most people. Wouldn't you say that, Timothy? Yeah. There was definitely double overhead sets. And there was definitely some, some kid, one kid in particular, who was probably half the size of us. Jackson! He was probably half the size of us, right? 
So that might mean that those were four times, three to four times ever had for him. Very <laughs> humbling, very humbling experience to even be out in waves that much, much less with kids that are half your size. Much less with a parental figure screaming at the kid to catch more waves, like coming down on him like he's at the, like in the Texas in a football game, like a high school football game. Just like screaming, yelling, lecturing, almost intimidating, like public shaming, I would, some people would describe it as. And the thing was that that kid is a bomb surfer. He's probably going to be one of the best surfers in the world. However, I really started allowed myself to wonder, was he going to hate surfing? This beautiful activity, is he going to learn to not like it? And I was almost having this imagination that a lot of the work that we do at our retreats comes from the occurrences that we were seeing yesterday of like being public, publicly shamed for doing the things that you love to do and not doing them up to a standard of someone else. Well, it was a really fascinating thing because it, it revealed a lot. It revealed why, like here we are, we're coming to Maui wanting to surf some of the the biggest, and not even, we haven't even like, we're not going to places like Jaws, and we went to a place called Honolulu Bay, which was pretty intense on a day that was very similar size to double overhead on some of the sets. And I had to realize like I was maybe even being a little hard on myself thinking like, man, <laughs> this is scary, like, how are all these people doing this? But then I, and then I like seeing that yesterday, I realized a lot of these kids were like raised here and like almost pushed into this lifestyle. Like pushed into it, like getting coaching, watched it probably for years because of, even though some of the kids weren't they out there and they like sent their little sister in? No, what what they say, the little brother, or what they say to him? I'd like to hear that part. They were just like, uh, it's too big for you out here. What are you even doing out here in the first place? You shouldn't be out here. I could hear his older brother giving him advice. And then he, so he went in. In the meantime, the other kid, is, is, is that the same kid that was getting lectured? No, I don't actually I can't remember. There was a few kids out there. I would actually like for you to, as a reminder, um, to maybe not use that kid's name. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can probably take that part out. Yeah. Uh, because I don't want, I'm not here to shame anyone. I'm just here to say that I got to see some stuff that I think will have January, lifelong right? impacts. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet that. And I bet, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to use their names because they're probably... That kid might be one of the best surfers in the world, and I wonder if he's going to learn not to like surfing, even though being one of the best in the world. And that's just like a real interesting balance for all the parents and the kids out there, the parents that want their children to excel at what their potential is. What's the balance of not like shaming them and like pushing them versus like, I, I believe it's a, there's a big difference between invitation versus manipulation. And I thought I saw some manipulative um, behavior out there, and I thought I saw the kid internalizing it and probably creating an energy inside like he was allowing an energy to be suppressed inside of him that maybe in the future I'll come on a rubber rose retreat and I don't mean that in a funny way or he'll have to he might do some kind of work like that or maybe someone will watch this video and maybe from the butterfly effect that him and his parental figure out there whoever that was We'll work it out and they'll learn to go back to the roots of the surfing and that was for fun, for love, for connection, for creation. And it's not about something to be a performer or a function-based identity. It's more about just having fun together and enjoying this gift of life. So it was just a really enlightening experience. I got to see how some of these surfers are created and why they're as good as they are, but also maybe why their attitude. Because there's a lot of people that are angry in the water. Isn't that surprising to me how many people are angry out there surfing? Yeah, it is. And the, the really cool part about it is that I sometimes notice myself in a time where I'm supposed to be in complete joy and doing this by complete choice, getting frustrated and angry. So I can really empathize with those people. But awareness is key. When, you, when, I, when I start becoming aware that I'm getting frustrated, like, wow. I see where these other people come from, and it's time to tackle that behavior head on. All right, there we go. Maybe we can put some cool footage over this piece. And there's Princess Diana doing Snapchat. her thing, Life Snapchat and her smoothies. Life is Diana, and a Timothy doing his thing with his electrolysis. Yeah, electrolyzed reduced water. I was talking about this a little earlier. I'm filling it up for the day. Um, I 
if anybody know research it, electrolyze reduced water. I've experienced a lot of healing from this water. My family has experienced a lot of healing. My parents, my dad who's a pharmacist, my mom who's a nurse, severe back pain's gone away, kidney issues, and if you're interested in possibly getting your machine, uh, you can email us. Uh, where do you want them to email? Tin all in? Yeah, do tin all in. Tin all in at gmail.com. Just ask how can I get one of these machines? Oh, because in I, my skin. And my Diana's skin. skin. My skin. Has up so much. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's it's, crazy. it's a real uh, health hack to have one of these machines. Oh, and I had a cold sore actually one day. I had a cold sore coming up. Put the acid water on. In two days. It was. Really that is a cool part, especially uh, the range of pH creating basic water that apparently you can get rid of all your cleaning supplies and the acidic water that allegedly. From, because I believe this, I've heard this is a Japanese medical device and that it can actually kill staph infection. And uh, that's out here in Hawaii, that's a useful machine to have for the people that are visiting for the first time that might get some cuts in places that might want some acid water. Uh, long story short though, yeah, it's a cool machine if you don't have, especially if you don't have access to spring water. Bro, we've been traveling with this for a little bit and it's cool to have like well we can't get if we don't have a spring and or if we even if we do we'll have multiple options of epic yeah, water so you carry that thing in our carry on <laughs> that's how original she's a queen bee she, she carries her honey everywhere <laughs> all right i'm going to actually show you how this water works a little bit i got a tea bag here and i got some reverse osmosis water which a lot of people think is really healthy so Watch what happens when you put the tea bag in uh, regular reverse osmosis water. Not much. Right? And then we're going to come over here. And here I have some prepared 11.5 uh, water from the, the machine that we're drinking from. And just to show you that water is not just water, that water can be different by its molecular, molecular structure. One of the things that this machine does, see, I'm like playing with the tea bag in the reverse, nothing's happening. <clears throat> and then I put it in here and you'll see that usually you have to um, heat water up to make tea. Hold it down here. Mm -hmm. But you can see how the, the, the water from the machine is making tea because the molecules are much smaller in there. It's like, tr it's like if you can think of throwing golf balls through a chain link fence as opposed to softballs. The golf balls are going to go right through the fence. And that's what this condon water does is it hydrates your cells and parts of your body that you never were able to be hydrated. So look, look at the difference here. That's pretty crazy. Water is not just water. Which means you get a lot more out of the nutrients because it, it's able to penetrate on a cellular level. Yeah, so if you're interested, again, email uh, Daniel and Diana, 10 all in at gmail.com to learn more about that. Because there's a business side to it. There is. You can get healthy and make money if you want. Win-win. Mm -hmm. win Win-win. And I swear, your skin will look good. All right, it's about 5 p.m. And as you can see, we're up here on this beautiful mountaintop. We were actually, Frank J and I, welcome to the vlog, Frank J. Yeah, what's up? Um, we were going to go try to get in some cold water. Both our bodies were craving that, but we came to this hill. And I don't think that we're going to make it down this hill, so we're deciding not to do it. As you can see, it says, Caution steep grade and then uh, yeah you can kind of see the hill from here it's pretty steep so we're gonna we're gonna forfeit this adventure for now until we get a, a be better set of wheels um, it's a tough decision you know part of me wants to do it just to see just to do it and make it adventurous but then there's a part of me that like just rented this car signed the agreement and uh, it's probably not a very wise decision, but we got an awesome view. There's so much land here that's like hidden, yeah. private. Yeah, that's for true. That's for true. That's for true. All right. Well, um, we're just wrapping up the day here, <clears throat> and I'm in the bathroom right now because in the it's so dark in the other parts of this house. Um, but yeah, today was an uh, interesting day. Daniel went on a silent fast. And um, yeah, I hung out with Frank J. We went to go do a workout. And something actually really crazy happened. We were driving along this road. We were kind of lost. And I was like 
thinking in my head that I wish we could uh, run into someone, like see someone in the street that they could point us in the right direction. And we, we sure enough, we did. And um, it was a hitchhiker, but uh, something really strange happened where <laughs> I was like asking him for directions and he needed a ride and he asked me if he can get in the car and I didn't say yes but he got in the car before I could even before I even responded all of a sudden this guy is in the back of our car and uh, it was he was super sketchy and I really wasn't proud of how I handled the situation I I think uh, for the sake of not creating an awkward situation or being very assertive and telling him either no I don't want you to I don't want to give you a ride or get out of my car I allowed him to stay in my car and I didn't say anything about it. And then I had this like sketchy guy riding in the back of the car. Um, and thank God nothing, uh, nothing happened. And uh, but I do think he was not in a good place in his life. Um, but it, it kind of uh, gave me empathy to to victims of, uh, especially women who've been taken advantage of. <laughs> um, yeah, because here I, you know, this guy asked me, he's like, hey, can I? I get a ride and I didn't say yes and yet he got in the car anyways and here I was like uh, I allowed I put myself in that situation um, and uh, I'm really kind of cutting that story short but it, it was a pretty wild event but um, yeah it turned out really good because I realized that I've developed some passive behavior here in, in uh, Hawaii especially hanging out with my older brother, kind of just going along with the flow, letting him make the decisions, and um, that really brought awareness to that that behavior that I was falling into. And then I got to, uh, later someone asked me, just a few, like uh, half an hour later after that situation happened, someone asked me about what I do, and I got to tell them, and I actually got to share uh, my love for Jesus uh, with them. And I did it very boldly because I think in that moment I was tired of not being bold and not being assertive. And um, I, yeah, I got to share my my passion and my love for God and just how much my relationship God with God means to me and how I ultimately want that for other people, just for other people to know the love of God that He's shown me. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just want to kind of wrap up this day. We didn't video as much as I like to today, but. Um, yeah, we're going to keep these vlogs coming, and also uh, not tomorrow, but the next day is the first day of Superhero Training Camp, and then, uh, so I'm excited about that, and um, also got the Singles and Christian Retreat I'm hosting in Costa Rica March 19th. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can email me at robbraz at gmail.com, or go to singlesandchristian.net and fill out the form, and I will be in touch with you. Um, yeah, but... Uh, I'm going to peace out, go to sleep. It's I've been going to sleep around 10 p.m. actually and waking up at 7 a.m. That's been our schedule here.